Hey guys, in this video we're gonna do two things. One, we're gonna give the player the ability to shoot at the enemies. And two, we're gonna add a basic camera. So you'll recall that in the last tutorial we had to make the player, uh, well we had to give the player uh, an area 2D. Let me open up the player scene and show you. So we gave the player an area 2D so that the player and the enemy could collide with one another. So this is a problem. This presented a new problem for us. Now when the player spawns a bullet, that bullet collides with the area 2D of the player and immediately it, and it immediately disappears. Let me show you. Well, I don't want to launch the player scene. So in the main scene, let's go ahead and launch it. <coughs> You'll notice, look at the output down here, down here. You'll notice that the bullet collided. Remember, we print out that message when the bullet collides. Um, so the bullet is colliding with the player because it's spawning at the player and it's colliding with the player's area 2D. All right, so there's a way that you can specify um, which objects. There's a couple ways that you can specify which objects an area 2D or a physics body collides with. The easiest and the most recommended way is to use layers and collision masks. So you can have um, objects be in certain layers and you can have them collide with only the objects in certain other layers. So go to the project, project settings and search for layers. And you'll see that there's layer name section, choose 2D physics. So you have all these layers, one through 20, right? Um, you can put certain ob objects into them and you can specify what layers an object collides with. So to show you this example, we're going to rename layer 1, layer 2, and layer 3. Let's call layer 1 um, player. This is, we're gonna, this is where we're going to put the player. Layer 2, let's call it bullet. This is, we're gonna, this is where we're going to put the bullet. And layer 3, let's call it enemy. This is where we're going to put all the enemies, okay? So close that and that will save it. Now for the, uh, for the player, select its area 2D, and for the player's area 2D, the layer that we want to put them in, click, click these little things and make sure that player is selected. So that's good so far. Now here's the layers that you want the player to collide with. Um, and here when I say that you want the player to collide with, I really mean that you want the player's area 2D to collide with because it's the area 2D that does all the collision, not the player itself, right? So let's say the player we want him to collide with, not the player layer, just with the enemy layer. All right, let's open up the enemy, select its area 2D, and make sure it's on the enemy layer, and then that it collides with just the player layer. Now let's open up the bullet select its area 2D. The layer that the bullet is in is the bullet layer and the layers that it collide oops and the layers that it collides with is just the uh, enemy layer. All right, I think that's all set up correctly. Now let's go ahead and launch our main and so now you see the bullet spawns and it does not collide with the player and it does collide with the enemy. So you see, it's colliding. Now let's make it so that when the bullet collides with the enemy, the enemy gets damaged. So here I have the bullet code, and we know that this function gets called when the bullet collides with something. So what do we want to do? Well, he here we have a reference to the thing that the bullet collided with. So that thing, we know it's going to be an enemy. So when I talk about this, let me open up the enemy scene. So that, this variable, right, this with variable is going to refer to this area 2D, an area 2D that belongs to an enemy. So if we're here, if we call get parent on this guy, we're going to get a reference to the root or node of the enemy. One thing that is extremely important, I may have said this before, but I want to say it again the type of this node, right? Remember that what you're seeing here is the name. The name is node2d. To see the type, move your mouse over it. The type is also node2d. So in this case, they happen to be the same thing, but they don't have to. Now, the type of this node is also um, 
the type of the script that's attached. So said in another way, and again, this is extremely important, so please try to remember this. The type of a node is, you know, whatever it says over here when you hover over it. But if that node has a script attached to it, the type of that node is also the type of that class that's in that script, okay? So remember that. So if I ask you, what's the type of this node right here? Well, it's a sprite. If I ask you, what's the type of this node? You could say it's a node 2D, but you could be even more specific. You could say that it's whatever type is defined in enemy.cs. What type is defined in enemy.cs? Well, it's a class called enemy. So you could tell me the type of this node is enemy. Anyways, let's pick up where we left off. So when the area 2D uh, of the bullet collides with something, this function gets called, and this variable tells you the area 2D that it collided with. We know that the bullet is only going to collide with enemies because that's how we set up our layers and masks. So we know we're going to get a reference to this area 2D. To get a reference to the enemy, right, we're going to get the parent. So if I do something like this, with that get parent, and we know the type of that guy is enemy, <clears throat> this is going to give us a reference to the enemy. We're just going to queue free. We're just going to delete it. So let's review. This function is executed when the bullet collides with something. We know that due to our layers and mask system, the bullet is only going to collide with enemies. And we know that the parent of the, of, uh, the area 2D um, of an enemy is the enemy itself. So we get a reference to the enemy like this, and we free the enemy. And then we free the bullet itself. So let's see that in action. Go to your main scene and play it. There you go, we freed it. All right, so let's add a slight little complexity here. We're not gonna immediately delete the enemy. Let's give the enemy some health. Um, and, and then after a couple of shots, we're gonna delete it. This is really easy. The plan is inside the enemy, we're gonna keep a health object. Every time that the bullet hits him, we're gonna subtract from the health. When it goes below zero, we're gonna uh, delete the enemy. So open up the enemy script. Let's give it a private health variable. Make it an integer. Let's initialize it to five. Now let's create a public uh, method called damage that when called will damage the enemy. So it returns nothing. It takes an amount that you wanna damage. What does it do? It subtracts that amount from the health. And then if the health then falls to below zero, it deletes the enemy. So nice simple method here. Now when the bullet collides um, with the enemy, we don't want to just free him, right? We want to instead call that damage method and we want to damage him one. So it should take about five or six shots to kill this enemy. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so a little bonus thing I wanna tell you before we move on to the camera is, um, there's a concept of a main scene that starts when your game is launched. I don't think we have a main scene set up yet, but if you plus press this play button here or hit F5, um, it's gonna say that you haven't selected a main scene, so you just click select. And then for our main scene, we're gonna uh, select this, you know, aptly named main.tscn. So that's a easier way to launch. Okay, so same thing here. All right, now camera. Um, we're gonna cover a really basic way to add a camera, a, a somewhat flexible camera. So. Uh, first, step number one is identify the node that you want to attach a camera to. So here, we're going to attach a camera to our player, right? So select it, then add a camera as a child. Camera 2D to be more specific. All right, now it's important that you select the camera and check current. So you can have multiple cameras in your scene tree, um, but only the current one is the one that's drawn onto the screen. So when you add a camera, don't forget to check current. I may, I've made this mistake many, 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 many times when I'm like, why isn't my camera working? And it always 
boils down to me not having this current checked. So don't forget to check this, okay? Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. Okay, that's it for the very basics. Um, let me show you and then we're going to customize it. So now watch. When the player moves, the camera moves. So it's hard to see this right now because we don't have anything stationary. So let me add something stationary to our main scene. Let's just go ahead and drag an image. Let's drag this icon image. All right, so I don't know if I showed you this before, but when you just drag an image onto your scene like this, it creates a sprite node and it adds that sprite node um, into your scene. So let's see, we got the player here. Let me zoom in a little bit, I'm too far zoomed out. We got the player, we have the camera, we have the icon, and we have the enemy. So for the icon, we want it to be out here out here we don't want it to be a child of the camera so just drag it on here there we go okay so the icon we're gonna put him somewhere here and now we can see that the camera is actually moving relative to the stationary object so you see the camera is following our player all right so now let's look at a couple of ways that we can simply customize this camera so first of all, this brown box that you see, that's the area that the camera will be visualizing. Select the camera, and first we're gonna talk about the zoom. So if you wanna zoom in, use a value less than one. So let's say 0 0.5 on the X and 0 0.5 on the Y. Now the camera is zoomed in, I'll show you what it looks like. There we go. If you want to zoom out, make it a value larger than one. So for example, two, two. So there we go, we're super zoomed out. So you notice that the camera immediately follows the player. Now, what you can do, one of the cool things that you can do, well, let's reset this zoom. So one of the cool things that you can do is you can create a little box around the player and as long as the player is moving moving within this little box, the camera doesn't move. As soon as the player moves outside of this box, then the camera follows them. So let me show you that visually. So this feature is called a drag margin. First, you have to enable it. So this enables it in the horizontal direction, and this enables it in the vertical direction. So we have it enabled. Now go to the editor section and make sure that you click on draw drag margin. This will draw the drag margin in the editor. So there it is. And you can actually set it by modifying these values here. Right now it's 0.2, that's good enough for me, but you can make it bigger or smaller. So let's see what it looks like. So notice if I move just a little bit, the camera doesn't move because I'm within that box. If I go to the edge, then the camera moves. If I go to the edge, then the camera moves. Another thing is the limit. So uh, you can have it so this purple camera box, basically the camera, doesn't go outside of a certain range. That's called the limit. So first we want to visualize this in the editor, go to the editor section of the camera, click on draw limits, and that will visualize it. Then go to the limit and set it. Right now they're set to massive values, so let's set it to like negative 700 for the left, um, negative 700 for the top, 700 for the right, 700 for the bottom and now we see that yellow box so what this means is that this as the player is moving right this camera box is moving to follow the player but it will make it so that the camera never moves outside of the, the limit outside of this yellow box so let's show you what that looks like in practice watch I'll move to the left and now the camera stops you notice the player keeps on moving because I don't have any logic that's telling the player to stop, but the camera stops. And that's it for this tutorial. Nice and short. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.